So first, uh, raise your hand uh, if you can, uh, if you've had uh, shoulder problems now or in the past. So pretty much almost everybody. Do you find uh, uh, hard to sleep through the night when you, when you have your uh, shoulder problems? At the end, we'll talk about strategies of how to uh, maybe make that a little more comfortable. Uh, Luis uh, has uh, graciously volunteered to, to come up and talk about his current shoulder problem and we're gonna I'm gonna quickly evaluate and show an exercise uh, that uh, can be helpful to uh, reduce some of the pain and improve the flexibility so Luis You keep it. We're gonna we're gonna give you the answers to to these questions, and then you'll have them for your information. You want to take your t-shirt off? You don't have to if you don't want. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, uh, which shoulder is, bothers you the most? Uh? Both shoulders. Uh, I've had a condition on my right shoulder for for a long time. But it's still problematic. And then um, just everything, everything. Everything that was on the questionnaire, I don't know if you guys got an email, but it asked, you know, and then the video that we saw. Mm -hmm. Virtually everything that's on there is what I'm experiencing now on both shoulders. This one uh, had been fine. So I was kind of doing a lot of things with my left because my right has been weak. Mm -hmm. But on Friday, just this past Friday, playing golf, I just, I went to take a little swing. Uh, it was a, like an eight iron. And I came around and it just, something happened on this one. So on, now, on this side? Yeah, so. on this side. Now. Did, so, uh, did you feel something tear or pull right, or? It wasn't, it wasn't a significant thing. It was just, I just, I just felt it. And it was, it was hurting, but I didn't, I didn't feel a tear. I didn't feel, it was more like a pull. So this is more of a recent uh, thing. Recent, yeah. Okay. May have you face me. Okay. Just have your arm out like. Yeah, it starts to hurt right about there. Okay. okay. Hold. Is that, okay. that? It's tender, but yeah. Okay, bring your arm down to your side. I'm testing one of the rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus muscle that is up on the, the top of the shoulder. Bring your arm out like like that. Hold it there. Okay. Hold, hold. Does that bother it at all? It, it's tender, yeah. It hurts. Okay. This is testing the infraspinatus and teres minor muscles, which are on the lower part of the shoulder, and they kind of rotate the shoulder outward. Push your arm out towards me. Yeah, the same. Hold. Does that bother you at all? No. Okay. So my assessment would be that he probably strained the uh, his upper supraspinatus muscle and maybe the muscle the infraspinatus muscle. These muscles blend into the shoulder capsule. Let me have you have a, let's have a seat right here on the end of the table here. Often uh, giving a, I was gonna give, uh, try one uh, stretch technique, but since he has both shoulders bothering him, I'm gonna try a different technique or a stretch that he would like do for a home program. 
and put your hands right here on your stomach. Another key imp component that can lead to shoulder issues is uh, over time having poor posture. So this is an exercise that kind of helps uh, address the poor posture. What I'm going to have him do is rotate his trunk and shoulders to each side. Move your twist as far as you can to this side. Okay, and then let's go to the other side. Does one side feel like it goes further than the other? Uh, yes, this, this way looks like it feels like it goes further. Do you see that? Does so what I would have him do is you exercise or stretch to the better side, and that will indirectly help uh, the other side. So let's have you rotate as far as you can. You don't have to twist your neck, just your shoulder blades and, and twist and try to twist more and hold for 20 seconds. I'll count for you. I'm counting in my head. Okay. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight. Two. And come back to the middle. And then we do that same thing again to the to to that same side. Push into my hand, push, and let go. This is just a little contract, relax. Push into my hand, and let go. Again, push, and let go. One more, push, and let go. Okay. Now let me have you raise this arm up and see how it if, how it feels. Compared to earlier today, how does that feel? I I didn't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> it feels better. It feels much better than it did earlier. I can raise it. Yeah. Say, so hold it right there. We're, we tested this last. Is that any different? Yeah. So that would be an exercise uh, that uh, I would give him to do for a home program. Oh. You just you don't need to do it on the the other side. It let's. Right, so put your hands here. Now just move to this side. Twist as far as you can. So that's, that's more than you did before. And, and we didn't stretch to that side. I know, we're just testing this side. You do, well, you would test each side and you just stretch to the side that moves easier or further. Hmm? For 20 seconds. And you would do it two times and then you would, you would uh, retest. You would do it two additional times retest. If it improves, then you would continue doing two sets to hopefully get to where it's gone or it doesn't help anymore. Michael, how would you create the, the uh, when you pushed against my shoulder? Okay. Yeah, that, just, that just makes the process go faster. Okay. So when the patient is being seen by me, I do that, but it's not crucial for that component to, to be done. Mm 
Mm, not necessarily. Often in therapy, a patient complains of where they hurt, but uh, a therapist has to look elsewhere for the cause. So in Lewis's case, I would say that postural components is probably part of why his shoulder got injured when he was hitting the, the golf club. You mean per day? Yeah. I, I usually tell a, a patient to do it like morning, afternoon, after dinner. But I tell them that if you saw that doing that exercise helped, if you did something and your shoulder is hurting, well, you know something that you can do right away to make it feel better. You, you would first kind of test the arm. You can maybe put a, a subjective uh, number from either zero to 10 or from zero to 100. And then when you, after you do the two uh, stretch for 20 seconds each, retest. If it's better, then continue doing that until it either doesn't improve anymore or you're feeling no pain anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks, Luis. And then there's a, a Kim who's here. And have you take your just your sweater off? Have a seat here and just maybe share with me and with the group. Uh, a little, which shoulder has been bothering you? the right side has been bothering since February. Since February, so that's about um, seven months, yeah, six to a, seven months. And I would have a lot of pain where I would, be, I would stop and I wouldn't be able to move because there would be so much pain. And then after it goes away, that you know, for I don't know how many seconds, it's that intense pain. And then it go away, but recently it's just started to get less. Have you seen a doctor or had any x-ray or MRI? Oh, okay. No, no injections or take any uh, medication or? No. Okay. Raise your arm up just up to there, okay. Hold it there, hold it. Oh, hold it right. Mm hmm Does that bother you at all? No. Bring your arm up. Hold right there, hold. Oh, hold right there? Yeah. Okay. Hold right there, hold, hold. How about that? It doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt, but... It doesn't hurt now, but it before it probably would have. Okay, because it's been getting a little bit better. Okay, what I want you to do is raise your arm as, as high as you can, and then from zero to a hundred, put a, put a number of what, what zero meaning it's fine, and a hundred means call 911. Oh, right so, now, right so. now it's, it's zero, but that's all I can do. I can't raise it up any higher. Right, okay. So so she can raise it maybe that's it. Maybe to maybe hundred and ten degrees. Okay. So this is one other exercise I would probably give her for a home program. It doesn't go back. <laughs> okay, I want you to raise so we're gonna be stretching the uninvolved side. So you're gonna stretch Put your arm right next to your ear and reach, reach, reach towards the ceiling and hold for 20 seconds. I'm counting for you. 10, 
that down. And we're going to do that one more time. Same thing, right next to your ear. Reach, reach, reach so that you feel the, the stretch coming down your side. Okay, now raise that arm again. Does it feel like it's going higher? I don't know. It's going, it's about 120 degrees now, so. a little bit higher maybe, I don't know. Yeah, how about try putting it behind your back, like a. Okay. All right, so we'll do the same thing again. Reach, reach, reach up. Down. And down. more time. Reach, reach up. Ten. And down. And now retest your arm. Yeah, it's going up, it's about 130. So, so I would instruct her to continue doing two sets, 20 seconds each, reevaluating, and continue doing that until it hasn't uh, helped again. You're working through the, uh, through the nervous system you know, basically the body wants to, uh, to achieve balance. And if you can exercise the uninvolved side and it helps this side, then you're not aggravating this side trying to improve it. Does that make sense? It's something that in the last 10 years is becoming more popular uh, as a, a way to help uh, different uh, injuries. We don't know that, but she'll be doing this, uh, you know, a number of times during the day. And, uh, but it's something that uh, will, you know, provide uh, more mobility. Try your arm behind your back again. A little bit more. A little bit higher behind my back, I think. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Round of applause for our two. Uh... <laughs> okay, let me see. Well, so we'll start talking a little bit about uh, the shoulder itself. Uh, the shoulder is uh, a joint that's a, uh, considered a ball and socket joint. It's similar to our hip where our thigh bone, thigh bone comes up into the pelvis, but it's a lot less stable than our, our hip. The scapula is what forms the socket and the upper arm is the ball. But a good way to think of 
the shoulder is that the scapula or shoulder blade serves like a T and the ball of the humerus bone is like a golf ball. So there's not a lot of stability just by the scapula or the T holding the golf ball. That's where the rotator cuff muscles serve its important uh, function to create the stability and then to hold it in place while we move the arm. What's interesting is that the ball and socket, the glenohumeral joint, is responsible for only two-thirds of shoulder motion. The other one-third comes from the shoulder blade, where when we raise our arm up, the shoulder blade rotates so that that T moves to create the other motion. So when we, when we develop shoulder problems like impingement, if the shoulder blade or scapula gets restricted and we're trying to reach up to the high, highest part of the cabinet or whatever, then that's going to cause wear and tear because uh, you're trying to over maximize the flexibility of only 60, 66% of the motion. So when we, the exercise we did with Luis, that's really getting the scapula to, to move a lot. And the rib cage and spine. So the four rotator cuff muscles are the uh, supraspinatus. Uh, Noah, can we have you come up here? Noah is one of our physical therapy aides. He wants to go into physical therapy school. He just recently graduated from UCLA. Uh, tell them what your major was. So that's a prerequisite for PT school is jazz drumming. So he's got it covered. Yes. <laughs> you want to take your shirt off? So the supraspinatus muscle is, is the top muscle. There's kind of a groove supraspinatus fossa that this muscle lies in and it attaches to the top of the shoulder joint. Its main function is to initiate moving laterally, but it also holds the shoulder, the bone in the socket as the shoulder moves around. Other muscle is your infraspinatus muscle. That's on the lower part of the scapula and it attaches to the back side of the upper arm. And that helps to rotate the, the arm this way. The teres minor acts similarly to the infraspinatus. It's right on the lateral border of the scapula and attaches close to where the infraspinatus attaches. The other rotator cuff muscle is called your subscapularis, and that's on the front border of your scapula. And it attaches in the front of the shoulder. Thanks. Of course. Uh, no, they, the, uh, the tendons of the rotator cuff muscles, they kind of blend into the shoulder capsule. And so an MRI will show uh, exactly which uh, tendon is, uh, you know, torn. You know, majority of tears don't need surgery. Uh, but if you ignore it, 
then there's a tendency for a tear to, to increase and that can eventually lead to possible need for surgery. So the shoulder also works in conjunction with other areas. When I said, you know, uh, find the pain, look elsewhere for the cause. So a therapist evaluating will check out a person's neck. The uh, nerves that supply the rotator cuff muscles come from mainly C5 and C6 levels in the spine. So you could have cervical problems and it'll cause pain in the shoulder, but the cause of the pain is coming from the neck, so you'd want to be treating the neck. Interestingly, the only bony attachment that the shoulder has to the rest of the body is the collarbone attaching to the top of your sternum. The scapula just lies on the back of the rib cage. So it's often said that the shoulder kind of acts like a yolk of an egg. The uh, position of the shoulder or yolk is dependent on the muscles that are attached to it. If muscles, if one particular muscle gets tight, then it's going to impinge uh, or alter the other muscles to ideally create uh, it to be in the most uh, neutral position. When we raise our arm, our collarbone kind of rotates up. Then the shoulder blade or scapula is obviously very important. And then the fourth would be the rib cage. When we raise our arms, our ribs kind of elevate. So an important component of uh, shoulder problems, especially where physical therapy can be helpful in getting it to feel better, is that if uh, you can find or the therapist can find uh, a particular motion that reproduces your particular aches and pain, we say if it's reproducible, then a therapist can cause it to be reducible. And we showed that with, you know, the different exercises to do. So now we, uh, we talked about sleeping being a, a prime uh, problem for uh, uh, people who are sh having uh, shoulder problems. Often uh, not lying on the side of, of the shoulder obviously is going to be helpful. If you're lying on the better side, you can put a pillow in front of you and kind of hug, and that can help take some pressure off the, the joint. One of the better uh, positions is to lie on your back. And uh, if you put a pillow, or where's a, Noah, can you get me a pillow, please? A shoulder, the shoulder joint uh, has uh, in different positions what, what we call loose pack position. That's where the muscles are the loosest and there's less, the, the least amount of pressure on the shoulder joint. If I'm lying down, you would hold your pillow like this and you would kind of rest your arm so it's, it's a little bit raised like this. And you, that's a position that gives the least amount of pressure on the shoulder. Yes. Any questions regarding that?
So one of the biggest mistakes with sh having shoulder pain is uh, ignoring it. And that's when it often will get worse or inflammation will lay to scar tissue forming and that creates more and more tension in the shoulder. So instead of ignoring it, often we can alter the, uh, the pain by taking medication. The medication just changes it. It doesn't really affect uh, it to, uh, to get better and is temporary. Or we can take care of it by, uh, by coming to Atlantis, possibly. <laughs> The most common causes of shoulder pain can be uh, problems with the neck causing uh, impingement, which means that when you raise the arm, you're causing uh, wear and tear because there's not the freedom of motion that we would like to have in the shoulder. And then poor posture, where we, like this, then you raise your arm, you can't raise as much as when you're in ideal posture. Another common uh, shoulder problem that's not exactly uh, a rotator cuff problem, but it, uh, it's called frozen shoulder. And that's something that uh, often takes a, a long time to to get better. It's uh, another uh, medical term is adhesive capsulitis and that's where the shoulder just starts, the shoulder capsule just starts getting tighter and tighter and we can't raise the arm up this way or or that way. Uh, Often it's, uh, it's an injury that you uh, didn't do anything about and instead of that injury slowly getting better on its own because we ignored it, it gets worse and they think it's a combination of the shoulder uh, injury along with the nerves coming from your neck that get affected and a reason it takes it can take anywhere from 6 to 12 months for a frozen shoulder to fully improve or get over it. There are three phases of a frozen shoulder. A freezing phase, a frozen phase, and a thawing phase. And therapy is most helpful in the last third, the thawing phase. Often in the first two phases, therapy can aggravate it. But I found that doing the uninvolved side, like stretching, can help this help that come along faster. So successful non-invasive treatment of a shoulder often includes hands-on treatment that a therapist does to help stretch the muscles and uh, get it to, to move uh, better. And then after we get good mobility, it's important to strengthen the muscles, to retrain its muscle memory, and to uh, have better endurance and conditioning. So those, those are the goals of, of coming for being treated with therapy. Well, you can take the like the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Aleve or um, Motrin or Tylenol, which is you know for pain. Uh, 
possibly that's why uh, uh, that's like altering it, but not really uh, addressing the the problem. I find uh, you know homeopathic uh, remedies they're uh, they're so minute in their um, chemistry that there's minimal to no side effects, but it can have some uh, good benefit. Yeah, uh, as you're getting uh, better and better, then we work on on the effective side, and of course, then you're, you're doing strengthening exercises and, and stuff on the effective side too. Yeah, you know, you know, you want to do exercise to to improve recovery, and not kind of prolong it or make it too sore afterwards. You know, the process of getting stronger exercise tears down the muscle fibers and then you wait for it to recover and it recovers to a higher level. So that's the process of uh, improving strength. It often, uh, cortisone shots often can help, but uh, they, over time, cortisone can soften the bone. So you, you don't want to do too much uh, of cortisone. Uh, cortisone is a powerful anti-inflammatory. The idea is do a, a cortisone shot and it reduces the inflammation to the point where it can heal on itself. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but uh, you know it has its place. Go. Uh huh. It can. It's. I mean, it's something that you know can give some relief, and maybe it'll allow you to sleep better. And getting a good night's sleep helps uh, in the long run. Uh, you want to strengthen and condition uh, so that. Uh, chance of injury in the in the future won't happen. When we first injure our shoulder, you want to uh, use uh, like ice or cold pack to stop any swelling. Uh, the word rice or R-I-C-E is often uh, a helpful term. R stands for rest, so you may on a, if it's a significant injury, you know, a sling or something to rest the shoulder may be helpful. Eye of rice is cold or ice. The C is compression, so you can put an ace bandage with the, the cold pack around it to stop swelling. And then the E is for uh, exercise uh, and elevation. Swimming? It can, but uh, if you have an inability to raise your arm, I would do maybe a, a, a breaststroke then, then a, a crawl. Or, or no butterfly either. <laughs> Yeah. So you you had a question? Good question. 
Arthritis starts to show up in x-rays in our 20s. There are plenty of people that have terrible looking x-rays and they're, they're not in pain. And there are other people that have fabulous looking x-rays you know, and they're in chronic pain. X-rays are best for ruling out tumors and fractures. It's very difficult for someone to look at an x-ray and say, oh yes, I can tell that you're in pain. I read an article recently that said that by the age of 50, over 50% 50 of people have slight tears in their shoulder. When they're 80, over 80% 80 of the people have them, and it may or may not even be symptomatic. Their shoulder pain might not be due to a little tear that they found on the MRI but because their posture is bad or their neck is giving them a lot of problems. So you want to address all the different uh, factors that could, could lead to that. Uh, you, you could do either, uh, I mean, depending on the severity of it, if it's, I mean, if it's really interfering with your, you know, your way of life or you can't get a good night's sleep or whatever, then, uh, then, you know, I'd want to. Well, I guess my question is, do you want a diagnosis before we actually get... Well, in, in California, we have what's called direct access. Somebody can come without a prescription from a doctor to see a physical therapist for up to nine visits in 45 days. If you're not getting better in that amount of time, then the state of California wants you to go see a doctor to get a diagnosis. So you can come to a physical therapist right off, uh, right off the street. <laughs> Yeah, with experience, you might say, yeah, uh, you know, uh, an MRI might uh, show why you're not getting better after three or four visits, possibly. Good question. Um, California was actually one of the last states in the entire country to allow... Uh, someone to come to physical therapy. Uh, Medicare still doesn't allow it, but uh, if you don't have, if you're under 65 and don't have Medicare, then you can, then you can come. You have to have a, a prescription. Yes. A physician. Any other questions? Wendy? So, um, okay, you said when the first injury used to ice, but how about like having injury for a while? Is ice still You can use ice, or if you want, you can use heat if you find that heat is helpful. I always I tend to tell patients that use whatever uh, is comfortable for them. Some people don't like the cold; it just is irritating. A fresh injury, ice tends to to have more um, numbing effect. But as soon as you take the ice away, the body senses that that area is colder, and it'll rush blood to the area to warm it. 
if you put heat on it, blood comes right away to the area. If there's a lot of spasm, uh, then I usually recommend to try uh, the cold first. You had a fracture? Not a fracture, but uh, I don't know how you can connect it with the... Uh, it dislocated? Muscle joint. One of the muscle joints. Oh, the, like the bicep tendon? The bicep. And then start having a problem. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, often, uh, like if one picks up a heavy suitcase and the, the long head of the bicep, which goes into the shoulder joint, uh, tears, and it, uh, it's kind of like a window shade. When it tears, it kind of And if you don't get it right away, a, a surgeon can reattach it, but otherwise it's out of luck. There are other muscles that can substitute. Right. The other one still works. Right. It usually just kind of is a kind of a bulge right right here. Correct. So you play tennis left-handed now? That's because you're substituting muscles to bring it a yes. across. Replacement. Yeah, that's usually uh, it's usually the patient who says, "I can't take it anymore." Can you do that? A shoulder replacement. That's it's a fairly new uh, uh, procedure, but we've had some. We've seen patients that have had that, and they they do well now. They often uh, the shoulder replacement reverses the ball and socket. The socket comes from the top of the humerus, the upper bone, and the ball becomes part of the shoulder blade, which is quite interesting. Ah, uh, three to six months at least. It can, but uh, you usually want to incorporate it with doing exercises and stuff uh, besides just the cortisone shot. It's up to you. Uh, you know, you, you may be, you're not going to be doing a lot of overhead serves and you, you, know, you may serve like this. You know, and and do your backhand using. You have to see. Uh, 
I, you know, after you're playing, if it's sore, I would, you know, put some ice on it. Also try the, uh, what I showed with her, uh, ex, uh, stretch arm reach on the, uh, on the opposite side. So you stretch that arm and see if it has some benefit on the involved side. Good. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was late. I just came from work. But mm -hmm. I don't hurt during the day, but when I'm sleeping at night, I wake up and a lot of pain. I've had three carpal tunnel surgeries in the last year and a half, and um, I never have any shoulder problems or anything. But it, it kind of starts right here, so when I go to get up in the morning, if I just reach to grab the blanket or something, I just feel like, oh. My impression is that maybe there's lots of other parts that are causing this to become aggravated. And we look at posture and stretching uh, other, other parts uh, of the body. That's okay. Uh, no, but uh, joint sounds just just kind of mean that uh, you know it's uh, slightly out of position, which could mean that some of the rotator cuff muscles are stronger than others, and they're being pulled out of position. So when we move, we we hear clicking or sounds in the shoulder. A snap is usually uh, most likely a tendon rubbing over a bony prominence okay. and it's causing like a... Yeah, exactly. So does that mean it's in or out? I mean, if it goes back in? I mean, I it's, really it's, hard say, it's hard to but, say, but uh, yeah. But often a snap is a rush of sensory information to your brain and that can cause pain to decrease. Also, maybe. maybe. Right. Jury is still out. A yeah. okay. couple more minutes if any other questions.